This has been a very crazy season to say the least. It has been filled with a lot of ups and also a lot of downs and everything in between as well. Uh, but on this special episode of NFL Questions from Subscribers, Lamar Jackson, what's going on with him? Well, what is up with Lamar and, and why has he been in this funk that he's been in for so long? Will he get out of it? Can he adjust? Can he make changes? Can he play better? Well, let's talk about this. Yeah, this feels like a dream. So YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and a very special episode of NFL Questions from Subs, a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. If you send it to the wrong email, I'm not even putting it anymore. No more chances for anybody. You send it to the wrong email, oops, oh well. Uh, but for the patrons, for the patrons, you don't have to send it via email. You can send it directly on Patreon. Shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Uh, if you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. If you don't want to, that's fine as well. I'm not going to love you any less. Trust me. Uh, I appreciate y'all, Team Keep It Clean. I love y'all. We got a lot to go over in this episode. Without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. First question came from my boy Martin, and, and appreciate you being a patron. He said, I'm confused on where our offense went first half of the season. The Ravens were airing the ball out, making plays downfield. Marquise Brown was on pace for a Pro Bowl season. Lamar was on pace for his second MVP. He looked good passing and running, but after the bye, this offense has been terrible. The deep ball isn't there. Our first round pick is getting one target a game after watching Mar Marquise Brown this season. I know he has a talent, but it seems to me Greg Roman just refuses to use our receivers according to their skill sets. What happened to Keith Williams and T. Martins making dividends in this receiving core? It was there at the beginning of the season. I don't even remember the last time Pro Shea caught a ball. Why are we not using our receivers we invested so much in? If your name's not Hollywood Brown or Mark Andrews, forget the ball. Uh, we throw like four screen passes a game to Hollywood Brown that go nowhere it has it, where it hasn't worked can we go back to using Hollywood as a deep threat I understand Lamar hasn't played that great either since the bye but I'm still putting most of this on Greg Roman I haven't been one of the ones who wants him fired but after Pittsburgh game I'm officially on the we need to fire Greg Roman right now all right so we starting this thing off with Martin bringing it um this the play over the past couple weeks yeah some of the play calling has been on greg roman but i feel like right now i feel like lamar is a bigger a bigger issue uh than greg roman um you you said it in the uh in your your, your message in your question you said if your name ain't mark andrews or marquise brown then you're not getting the ball and that's what it's been with Lamar, especially over these past couple of weeks. Lamar has thrown six interceptions to Mark Andrews in the past two games. Five of them counted. The sixth one, if you remember, on the very last drive of the game, very last drive of the game, Lamar snapped the ball, threw, Minka Fitzpatrick jumped it. It was intended for Mark Andrews, but Mika Fitzpatrick jumped it, interception, but they said, oh, no, 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 false start. Ooh, hoo, hoo, boy, saved it. Sa <laughs> oh, they saved the game with that false start. I don't even remember who it was on, but regardless, it was intended for Mark Andrews. The interception at the very, very beginning of the game, the Ravens offense is doing something that we like, whoa, where have these guys been? They had they've been doing something at the very beginning of that Steelers game that we weren't used to them doing, and that's moving the ball downfield early on in a game. But then Lamar. Lamar, he the hero ball, the Superman ball, the save the day ball. He can't do that all the time. Now I ain't I ain't got no problem with it. I, I understand him trying it. But I just you you guys to be sure, like, you guys to be sure. I remember um, him making a throw like that his first season starting. Starting from the beginning of the year in the Miami game against the Dolphins. Um, I remember same same exact thing. Same exact scenario. 
Pressure comes in. Lamar evades this guy. He evades that guy. He's on his back foot. He's on his back foot and he throws it. Miles Boykin, touchdown. He's wide open. It's like, okay, let's go, Lamar. Let's go. Loved it. Appreciate it. It was a great play. But it's situational. Minka Fitzpatrick was right there. And when Minka Fitzpatrick saw that, he was like, what? Is this, is this easy? I mean, I, I saw how it was in the Browns game last week, but it, is this easy? Right into his arms. Right into his arms. And, you know, I remember, we remember the Flacco days. One of the, our biggest gripes with Flacco sometimes would be those throws off of his back foot. We, know, we knew Flacco had the arm. We know Lamar has the arm. But the throws off of your back foot, is, especially in the traffic. If you're going to throw in the traffic, okay, you're going to throw in the traffic. You're going to take some risks sometimes. But if you're throwing in the traffic off of your back foot, Lamar, Lamar's decision-making recently, it's, it's, I don't know what's going on. It's been bad. His decision-making has been bad. I cannot put this all on Greg Roman. It is not all on Greg Roman. This is Lamar has been he's been missing open guys. He's been making bad reads. And he now we know what Mark Andrews is capable of. Well, Mark Andrews is it's either it's, it's hot and hot and cold. Hot and cold. It, it, is, it is very extreme with Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews either makes these tough, crazy catches and these big plays, and it's like, let's go. Or he drops some easy ones. And the Steelers game, prime example of it. But with Mark Andrews, he, he isn't the only person that's out there. But sometimes Lamar acts like he is. Now, we know if you have somebody that, you know, this person, y'all, y'all done been through a lot together. Y'all close with each other. Y'all done been through so much. That person, you, you start to rely on that person. And you feel like, man, if I'm in a pinch... I could just hit this person up and be like, look, hey, I'm going through this. Can you help me out with this? Hey, can you come through for me one more time with this? And they do. It's the same thing right now with Lamar and Mark Andrews. When Lamar's in a pinch, when he's in a bind, stuff going rough, he looks for 89. But the problem with that is that he locks on to 89. And a lot of other people will be open. But since he's so focused on 89... Because he knows what 89 can do. He knows what 89 is capable of. We all do. But Lamar will be focused on 89 and won't give other people an opportunity. And those other people, they, they could be in a position where they, can, they have a chance. They got a shot. But Lamar won't even see them. Even on that interception, on the interception of Mark Andrews, right in the middle of the field, coming in right across the middle of the field, was Hollywood, another one of his favorite targets, but Lamar didn't didn't even see him, didn't see him, didn't look for him, and again he was getting pressured, but still, still. Uh, and of course we go back two weeks ago to the Cleveland Browns game, four interceptions, and literally every single one. Intended for Mark Andrews. Every single one. Every single one. So it's like after the first one, it's like, ah, okay, whatever, whatever. And after the second one, it's like, oh, okay, whatever. Then the Browns are probably like, okay, well, okay. These two were intended for Mark Andrews, but and we, we know Lamar loves this guy. Uh, I don't know, y'all. Let's, let's just see how it plays out. All right, let, you, well, watch Mark Andrews. Even if these other guys are running right over, watch Mark Andrews. The third one, boom, Mark Andrews. And they're like, oh, oh, we on to something here. We on to something. All right, you know what? Every pass, double Mark Andrews. Double him. Because we know even if he's doubled, Lamar will still throw the ball his way. Double him. Let's just double him. So then the fourth one, Mark Andrews. Now, now the, the fourth one was, again, that was just an amazing play by that safety or corner, whatever he was. from the That was just a fire play. But still. Mark Andrews.
I was talking to my guy JT earlier today. He's talking about like, how, how can Ravens fix this? How, how can they fix Lamar right now? Because like I, I said, I, I think he's broken right now. He's broken. He is broken right now. And the Ravens are sitting at 8-4. and four, So they're still in a very good position in the AFC and in the AFC North, of course. But they got to, this, this has got to be righted ASAP. Now, I know most Ravens fans are not expecting them to make any noise in the playoffs whatsoever. There are a lot of Ravens fans that are like, oh, we're not even going to the playoffs. I disagree with that part. And, again, I, there's, there's some Ravens fans that are like, oh, man, they should just go ahead and cancel the season. Go ahead and just throw in a towel. No, no, not at all. I disagree with that wholeheartedly. I'm never for tanking, even if the team was doing bad. Because I feel like, hey, even though this team decimated by injuries, decimated by decision making, decimated by the different things, they're eight and four. So their biggest problems, I feel like a lot of them are fixable. A lot of them. Now with the offensive line, that's the biggest issue that I feel like would be the toughest to fix. I feel like that's like you're extremely limited on what you can do. Patrick McCarry out for a couple of weeks. So you just lost somebody else for a couple of weeks. So I just, um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what they're going to do there, but you have to counter that. You have to. You have to counter that. And as bad as the offensive line has been this year, there's still been opportunities to make plays with the passing game. But back to Mark Andrews, when I was talking to my guy JT, I was like, man, maybe as a coach, because you, 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 could, you could talk up Lamar, you could coach up Lamar, you could tell him, hey, this is what you should do, this is what you shouldn't do, da 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 But, and this could be an addition, addition by subtraction, what you might have to do would be to take Mark Andrews off the field so then, and I'm not, not obviously not permanently, obviously not throughout a whole game, nothing like that, and not for no crazy amount of time. But you may have to, in certain situations, and, but, but the, see, that's, that's what makes it so tricky because, you know, in those certain situations, Mark Andrews has been a go-to guy. He's been a go-to guy for Lamar, and he's made a lot of plays over the years. These two have been together since their rookie years. Rookie years. They've been in this thing together. So it, it, it will be very, very tough. For, and this is your 54 or $56 million man as well. But like Harbaugh and them always say, there's no one man that's bigger than the team. So there's going to have to be times when addition by subtraction, you may have to remove Mark Andrews from the field, take him off the field so that would force Lamar to throw it to somebody else and to build that big trust with somebody else. Because again, right now it's, it's just been Andrews, 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 Andrews. And again, like we said earlier, when you, re when you can rely on somebody, when things are going rough for you, you're gonna, you're gonna go to that person you, because you trust them. It's like, oh, I, I know they're gonna come through for me. I know they are. But teams, they plotting on that. They watching that. So and, and I would I would love to see um out of all of Lamar's interceptions this year. I think it's like what 13, 14, something like that. I forget how many it is. But I would like to see out of all Lamar's interceptions this year, how many were intended for Mark Andrews. I think it's 13. But we know out of the last out of the last two games, five of them were. So that's only what uh man, math just messed up. Um that's uh, eight. Eight left. Wow. Can't believe that took me so long. But <laughs> that's eight interceptions left. Uh, and I would love to see how many of those were intended for Mark Andrews. But as far as Lamar, um, he's got guys to step it up. Because like we talked about earlier, I, I do expect the Ravens to be in the playoffs. Um, and, and like I said, I would rather them be in the playoffs than be, oh, okay, you know what, let's, let's end the season. All right, Marlon Humphrey's out for the year. You know what, okay, it's over. No, 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 no. Because mm -mm. anything is possible. And all you got to do is get in and try to make some noise. I would much rather that than, oh, you know what, uh, let's just, since we're not Super Bowl, continue, you know what, da, da, da. 
Since we don't look like a contender, you know what? Oh, forget the season. No. Hmm. Try. Still try. Don't give up. The odds are definitely against the Ravens for sure. But I don't think that they should tank. I don't think they should give up at all. Um, but, yeah, Lamar, he's, he got to get this thing right. Now, um, something else that needs to be done and coaching really has to get this through Lamar's head. Throw the ball away. You hear commentators say it all the time. You hear it so much. Live to play another down. Live to fight another down. When you force the ball and then you end up turning it over. When you try to force the play, you hold the ball forever, forever. No, nothing's coming open. You end up taking a sack. You can end up fumbling the ball. You lose field position like that. And sometimes you you can lose the ball. <laughs> and you can lose because when, whenever you lose the ball, whenever you turn the ball over, you take away points from your team automatically. Because anything that was a possibility, you take it away just like that. Immediately. Because you gave the ball to the other team. So now your team, it, the possibility of them scoring on whatever drive that was, it's done. And something that my guy Cam brought to my attention, he was like, man, if the Ravens, uh, if the, if the Ravens would have kicked the field goal on that first drive, then we're not even talking about a two point conversion at that point. And I was like, oh man, I did not even think of that. But who who knows how the game would have played out? But that's just something to think about. The Ravens, at the least, on that first drive, at the least. Well, the least would obviously have been zero if Justin Tucker would have missed a field goal. But the least amount of points they could have scored if they scored would have been a field goal. Ravens lost this game by one. But that's because they end up going for two. But they didn't even get an opportunity for three in the beginning of the game. It's crazy. It's a game of inches. A game of inches. It's a game of points, though, too. <laughs> you got to score. So... Coaching, they, they got to get it through to Lamar. Throw the ball. It's, it's okay to throw the ball away. It's okay to take it in completion. It's, it's okay to throw the ball away. You don't have to be a hero on every single play. Now, I think this whole hero ball, I think it comes from a good place with Lamar Jackson because you know that Lamar, he wants to do whatever he can possibly do for this team. We've seen it in so many games, and, and you can tell. Like, you could tell by the way that Lamar Jackson runs. You can tell when he's in that, all right, it's, it's got to be me. You can tell when he's in that mode. In the Steelers game, he was in that mode early. You could, you could always tell by the way that he runs. Always. He was in that, in that mode early this game. And you can understand why. The team decimated with injuries. The team is just, they, they, they limping to the end of the regular season. Limping. But Lamar got to realize, if, if you keep turning the ball over like crazy, if you put the team in bad positions, they may be limping now, but they're going to be paralyzed come uh, playoff time. And they won't even make it to the playoffs as a matter of fact. So he's got to do a better job with that. Throw the ball away. It's okay. Yeah, trust me. At this point of the season, especially with, with his touchdown interception ratio, ain't none of us worried about that right now. None of us saw. But that brings me to something else that some people have brought up. That they think Lamar Jackson, he may be thinking about his contract. He may be thinking about his bread. He may be thinking about, oh, man, I really got to show this team that I'm worth it. And we know, like, Lamar and his mom, they could present it to EDC and them like, hey, what would you do without me? Because we can all easily say, and we, everybody knows, without Lamar, this team is not 8-4. and four. They're not. They are not. But recently, Lamar has been a big issue. Now, just because he's been playing bad recently, does that mean that he's not worth a big deal? Oh, of course not. He is definitely worth that big deal because he is the Ravens. The Ravens, they go through him. Everything goes through him. Everything does. I was talking to one of my guys the other day, 
And I, I was just like flabbergasted when he said it. I thought he was just joking around at first, but he wasn't. He was like, man, I, 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 want, a new, uh, I want a new coordinators, maybe even a new coach. And for all that, I'm like, okay, I didn't heard plenty of people say that before. Then he said, I want a new quarterback. And I was like, what? Excuse me? And then, again, I thought he was trolling at first, but then he named the quarterback. He said, uh, Desmond something. I, I forgot what his name. He plays for the, uh, the school that, um, that Chris Moore went to. The Bearcats or the Wildcats. I think the Bearcats, something like that. I, I forget. Cincinnati. Yeah, Cincinnati Bearcats, I think. Anyway, but when, when he said that, I was like, whoa. I, I was thinking, like, what? Hold up now. Like, uh, uh, no, no. Lamar's struggling right now, yes. But new quarterback? No, not at all. Let's fix this. Let's fix these issues. Let's, let, let, let's correct these problems. Because they are things that are fixable. And we saw some promise of the, of, of the fixing in this game. We saw the problems in this game too, but we saw some promise with the fixing. The checkdowns. The checkdowns. Lamar Jackson threw checkdowns to Devontae Freeman, to Latavius Murray. I was like, yes, there we go. He did, and they resulted in great plays. And we were like, oh, my goodness, this, this is great. And it was weird seeing it, but it was great seeing it. So that needs to continue. And obviously not every play is going to be a checkdown, but every play also does not have to be a big play. It doesn't. It doesn't. So coaches got to get in his ear. They got to get in his head and let him know like, hey, Lamar, you ain't got to do all that. Not every time. But again, like I said, going back, you know, he, he wants to be the hero because the team relies on him so much already. They already rely on him so much as is. But then with all the injuries, I, I can understand like, oh, man, all, all these people hurt. It's so much more that's on me now. It's, it's so much more that's on my plate. I, I, I got to do it. So that's why he tries to play hero ball. But they got to let him know, like, no, you, you don't have to do that all the time. You don't. Like James Urban. We saw James Urban first drive of the game. That's how we knew. We knew that Lamar was already in his own head because the first drive of the game. And they, I'm, I'm sure they, no, nah, you know what? It's, it's not Ravens. That are capturing the game. It was CBS, I believe. Because I was about to say, I'm sure they regretted showing that, but no, it was CBS. So I'm sure they love showing it. But first drive of the game, James Urban was like, to Lamar, he said, Whew. he told him to breathe, relax, chill out. He told him, first drive of the game, he's telling you that. So you know Lamar was, he could already tell Lamar was pressing. He could tell. He's been his coach for what, the past like three years, I believe, two, three years. So he knows Lamar. So you just, the hero ball, it, it got to stop. Or at least it got to slow down a lot. We know there's going to be some plays where Lamar, he got to do some crazy stuff. Because of the offensive line, because of this and that. But it's, it's got to slow down. Now, as far as uh, what my guy Martin was saying about Giro, um, with with G, because he said that he feels like Giro should be fired. With Greg Roman, um, there's been a lot of frustrations, and again, all, the offense just as a whole has just it's not been good. But right now, like again, I think the bigger issue is Lamar right now than Giro. Now, um, one thing that the biggest thing that I think with Giro, in my opinion, is with Rashad. And this is on Lamar, too. We're not feeding him when he is out there. And not that you got to force him, but you got to see, man. Like this guy, <laughs> he, he can make some stuff happen, man. He can get open. Um, but I just, I'm still not understanding why they're taking him off the field. I know some, some people have been like, oh, well, and it was a really good point. They said, oh, well, 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 Sammy Watkins is back. Remember, when Rashad first came back, Sammy Watkins, he was out. I was like, ah, yes. That's a great point. That's a really, really great point. Um, but now Sammy is obviously back, and he's healthy again. 
Uh, so that has taken away a lot of Rashad's playing time. Um, now, one thing that my guy JT said, if, if, if you really, and this, this will be something right here, and we will probably never know if this ever happened. Well, maybe we would if we saw how the offense went. But a uh, couple things. Number one, uh, with Giro, I, I, he talked about a couple weeks ago how with the up-tempo offense, he said, oh, you don't, you don't want to do that early on in the game. He basically shut down uh, the Ravens running the up-tempo offense early on in games. I didn't like that. I was like, no, no, I disagree. Even when Mark Andrews was asked about it, he's like, oh, yeah, I would, <laughs> I would like to run up-tempo up in the games. I, I would like it. But then he was like, oh, but, but, but Greg Roman is doing a great job. So Mark Andrews was like, hey, I'm, I'm not, I ain't talking down on Greg Roman at all. I need my targets, even though I know I'm going to get my targets regardless because Lamar always looking for me. But Mark Andrews was like, nope, y'all ain't getting no drama out of me. Nope, uh-uh. G-Roll's doing a great job. But if they ran that up-tempo offense early on in the game, oh boy, it would do wonders for this team. And you don't got to do it Chip Kelly style. But just incorporate that up-tempo offense earlier on to, to just wake them up. Wake them up because they, they come out sleep every game. But back to what my guy JT was saying. He said maybe for us to really see who the problem is, they should let Lamar call, call his own game. Let him call his own game. And Giro just sort of take a back seat. Let Lamar call his own game and then see. What kind of personnel Lamar would want? What kind of tempo Lamar would run? How that would be? Now we know that's not going to happen. But, well, you never know. Nah, it's not going to happen. They ain't going to let him do that. But just something to think about. And I know what Giro, Giro got. He, he got his history. He got a long history. Again, with the Bills, with the 49ers and whatnot. I did not know that he was actually an offensive line coach for the Ravens back in like 06, 07. I was like, what? Really? Giro? Gregory, um, but that was a, a cool little find from yesterday. So anyway, bottom line, whatever the issue is uh, with Lamar Jackson, um, they have to get it fixed because it's, it's, it's stuff that can be fixed. The way that he's been seeing the field, well, the the, the way he hasn't been seeing the field, that's that's new. That's not Lamar Jackson. He's been seeing the field good ever since his rookie year. Since his rookie season, you can see that the way that this guy looked and, and went through his reads and the progressions and all that. You can see that from his rookie season. But he ain't doing that right now. He is not doing that right now. So something's got to give, man, to where this gets fixed and it gets fixed fast. You got a division game coming up against the Browns. You're playing the Bengals again. You're playing the Steelers again. You're playing the Packers and you're playing the Rams. You have a tough End of the season schedule. It's still a nigga for Sunday though. So there's that hope. But anyway, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Shout out to Martin for this great question. Um, and I just, oof, let's hope that these issues, they end up getting corrected. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And just like we want these issues with Lamar Jackson to be, we out. Shout out to Graven.